June now in public. And this is the, and welcome to uh, family and friends of, uh, of councillors uh, to this part of the meeting, which um, I think in many ways is the most important part of the meeting because it's the acknowledgement service. And the first item on the agenda for this part of the meeting is the acknowledgement of service of retiring community board members. And uh, I'll move from the chair uh, and then, I'll, then ask um, councillors to speak to this. I'll move from the chair that uh, council record its sincere thanks to the following retiring community board members for their loyal and conscientious service given to the city of Dunedin. And I think it's worthwhile uh, reading out the full list of names. Uh, first is Jan Tucker, chairperson of the Chalmers Community Board, who has been there for 16 years. Then there's the Mosgill Tyree Community Board, Barry Barber, nine years, Teresa Christie, three years, Brian Miller, three years, Sandra Wilson, six years. The Otago Peninsula Community Board, John Bellamy, chairperson, uh, 11 years. Bill Allen has been there for 11 years and Natalie Katiana for six years. <coughs> Saddle Hill Community Board, Ernie Ball, for 12 years. Strath Tyree Community Board, Matt O'Connell, has been there for three years. And the Wakawaiti Coast Community Board, Andy Barrett, has served for six years and Les Puller has served for three. Uh, I'll move that. Is there a second? Councillor Witherall. Uh, I'd open it up for a discussion for councillors to make any um, statements uh, that they wish regarding it. Councillor Noon. Not wanting to repeat myself, Your Worship, but I jumped the gun on the 23rd of September and uh, acknowledged uh, Jan Tucker's contribution to the Chalmers community, uh, the West Hartley community, and uh, so I just really want to reiterate um, those words. And uh, knowing Jan, I'm sure she wouldn't be offended um, if I reminded everybody that she ran a meeting a little bit like a school teacher. Uh, she, she spent um, a considerable amount of her working life as a school teacher. And uh, as I said on the 23rd, she was firm but fair. But uh, seriously, uh, Jan provided the, uh, the Chalmers board with a, a wide cross section of views um, that was very representative of, of her community. And I think the reason for that, she had a, a quite an extensive uh, network of, um, of friends and, and former colleagues, whether it was in the education area. And she resided uh, previously uh, before she shifted to port uh, in, in Purukanui. <coughs> but the other thing I just wanted to mention uh, that Jan has been uh, a stalwart in terms of ensuring that the, the Port Chalmers and surrounding area had their, um, their quota of, of police. Um, and at times, because of restructuring uh, through the New Zealand Police Association or Police Force, uh, it has sometimes come under threat, the two uh, constables that, are, uh, that, that cover the area. And uh, I can recall uh, several years ago when there was a public meeting held and uh, you know, the community got behind uh, the community board and uh, Jan, I remember Jan chairing that meeting and uh, you know, there was some strong views from the community about the possibility of losing that, um, that second uh, police officer. And uh, of course the good news is that, you know, that, that the two were retained. But that was just an example of the sorts of things that Jan did and uh, you know, she'll be um, sorely missed. Oh, and one of my first conferences I went to was, um, I think probably within a couple of months of when I was first getting election, elected was the community board conference. <coughs> Councillor Noon was there as well and um, it was an opportunity for me to meet a lot of the community board people. Jan was one of them obviously because she was there at the time. Um, and as a new councillor, seeing the work that the community board did and meeting a lot of them and actually getting the feel for the importance of community boards to the Dunedin city. And it was a real eye-opener for me and everybody was really supportive and kind and um, wanted to include me in things and it was great. And ever since that time, Jan in particular, I'm going to pick her out because I probably had more to do with her than any of the other chairs, she's just been a brick. She's been a wonderful person. I know how hard she's worked for that community. And I'm pleased to see that she's put a hand up to come into the Waitaki community <coughs> now too, which is really good. So hopefully I'll be seeing some more of her. Um, yes, yeah, so people who are standing for the community boards this time around, good on you. You, you are valued. This council does value them. And... Um, 
one like so. Can you wish it just, um, I've only had the, the yeah, pleasure really of being on the Otago Peninsula Community Board for three years um, and I note the, that um, the, the history of the members who are retiring goes back much further than that so I can't speak to the contribution, um, that I, I haven't personally witnessed the contribution before the three years that I've been on council, however um, the all three members that are retiring from the, the community board out there, I've learned a lot from, and um, John Bellamy in particular, I know as chair, has served um, his community um, tirelessly and with a lot of passion um, for, um, for all of his time um, as the chair over the last three years and probably for um, his entire time before that. Um, I know in particular one issue that has been really close to his heart has been um, the Peninsula Cycleway. Um, and I know that he's come and stood before us many times and um, articulated how passionate he and his community are about the safety um, of his residents, of the residents out there and, and how much that particular project um, uh, contributes to that. So I know that it's with a, a great deal of pleasure that he's noticed, no, noted that we have continued with that project. Um, I know also that he um, was very pleased um, in the last term when uh, the Portobello jetty was funded by this council um, uh, because he, he does believe strongly in community contribution to those projects and he knows how much, um, but he personally knows how much that community um, out there put into fund, raising funds for projects like that. So. Um, I do know that um, it won't be the last at the Peninsula Sea of John. He's obviously he's got his business out there, and he will be working, um, I'm sure, in all the other facets. Continue to work in all the other facets that he serves that community through all the different organisations, particularly art groups that he's involved in. Um, um, but all three of those members will um, be missed on that Pen Peninsula Community Board. Council Widow. Thank you, sir. Uh, my comments brief. I just want to acknowledge. Uh, I guess I like one or two around the table, have had the privilege of being a chair of a community board for a number of years and obviously been migrating on to council. But I know at 81 years of service, sir, from 12 members, I congratulate them on their community service to the city. Councillor Brown. Worship, um, the Moscow Tory community board members there, <coughs> um, I'd just like to mention Theresa Christie and Sandra Wilson. They gave a, a, a great community aspect to what it was to like to live in a community of Mosgiel. And they also contributed really well in the Playground Trust, uh, which raised over a million dollars for the Playground in, in Mosgiel. So they've certainly done their community service. Brian Miller was forever challenging on the community board. And Barry Barber called a spade a spade. And uh, I think the governance officers had to use quite a lot of uh, discretion in reporting some of his remarks sometimes. But he always got his point across, so I think they served the community well. Mr. Stevens. Yeah, I would like to thank all of these people for their contribution to the community. I want to keep Dunedin beautiful, and we quite often have representatives from the community board of which some of these members are on. And they bring just such wealth of knowledge for their local community, and then actually go out there and actually do a lot of the gum boot work, and I much admire them for doing that. Um, Andy Barrett does a lot with promotion of the food industry as well, and um, yeah, I think that what they all do in their community is absolutely brilliant, and no doubt it will continue. Speakers. There being none, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. <coughs> okay, we're on to item 15, and this is the acknowledgement of service of councillors who are retiring. And the first, as it is probably for the last time in alphabetical order, since it's not on the order paper, on the uh, voting paper at that way anymore, is Councillor Ackland. Can you change it now? <laughs> We're still in the old system, Bill. Um, and I'll open it up for other councillors to comment. I just would say that Councillor Packham will probably be remembered as the tallest councillor that was ever on the City Council. And for two very surprising things. The only times that I have been uh, on a stage singing were at the behest twice of Councillor Ackland. And the other surprising thing was that I managed to get him on a bike once. <laughs> 
you were on a flight with the state. <laughs> so um, I'll invite you in a minute, um, Councillor Ackland, to uh, I'll move, I'll need to move the resolution. I'm ably um, advised here. So I'll move that the Council record its sincere thanks to Bill Ackland for the loyal and conscientious service given to the City of Dunedin as a member of the Dunedin City Council for nine years during the period 2004 to 2013. And the Council extends sincere appreciation for the services rendered and every good wish for the future. Seconded, Councillor Bazet. Now, if anyone would like, I'm going to invite Councillor Ackland to speak in a moment, but if anyone would like to speak first, Councillor Bazet. Now, I realise, uh, Bill, that I could very well be in your position this time next week, <laughs> <laughs> given the uh, result of the, of the polls. <laughs> However, um, I would just like to um, acknowledge uh, the work that you've done on the council over many years. I can remember when you uh, first came in, I, I felt quite encouraged because you were the only council at the time that showed any interest in uh, being part of the, uh, the Masters Games. And while I, and I'm sure you'll admit that you were not necessarily an athlete yourself, <laughs> uh, you certainly showed some uh, interest in it. And, um, and, 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 that, and that, was, uh, that, was, that was very good. Um, you served uh, in the last few years as uh, Chairman of Community Development. I think you've done a great job there. Uh, you've had a lot of um, difficult uh, times with regards in particular to um, the uh, John Wilson Ocean Drive. Um, you, you had some battles on your hands with that. But um, throughout, you, throughout uh, all that time, I think you uh, uh, stuck to your guns. You, were, you had integrity. Um, I was very surprised when I was overseas and I saw this email come through that you weren't going to stand. I thought that you would be around for a long time. In fact, um, you're young enough, of course, to come back and that may happen sometime in the future. Uh, and if that happens, that, that would be good because I think you've got the, uh, the, the ability and, um, and if that comes to pass, well, uh, you know, all the best. Uh, you've taken a new direction, you're in a new job now and um, I wish you all the very best. Well, I want to say thank you. I've enjoyed working with you for the last three years, and I'm horribly disappointed that you've uh, decided to change your career and move in a new direction. And like John, um, I hope that uh, in time to come that you're going to come back and sit around this table again, not necessarily down here with us, and maybe you might be sitting at the top of the table in, in years to come. So, very good luck for that. But really, on behalf of the community that you and I have worked with for the last three years, thank you for the passion and the thought that you've put into the, some of the projects that we've worked on. And uh, for many of them, people not understand just how much of a contribution you've made and how much time you've had to put in. But uh, I sincerely thank you, and I really have enjoyed working with you. Councillor Collins. Thank you, little Bill, for uh, the friendship and, and the work that you've done as a city council. I like to think that somewhere in that mix I'm a bit of an old father figure and a mentor to you. And I can tell other councillors that um, when we're running a little social committee, Bill was pretty good with uh, ideas of how to socialise and have a darn good time. He's not bad on the barbecue, in fact he's excellent on the barbecue, great on the uh, musical numbers and getting us all involved, karaoke or whatever it might have been. So um, in, in council he was, as John and uh, Paul have just said, and others very passionate of, uh, of the agenda, of what he had to do, how he had to get there and, and swaying councillors is not an easy task some days, but you stuck to your guns as you have, Bill, and uh, done the city proud. Um, I'd like to think too that you've probably got some attributes that may, may still come to the fore in the Masters games, not musically, but who knows what other schools. John Bazette thought you were the only one interested, but that sort of knocks my bowls and rowing efforts into the cart and drop a cart in somewhere. But, um, and, what? and curling, I don't know if I did that, but I might have. Uh, but Bill, you've been uh, a good, good fellow to have to work with on, on council, and I've enjoyed it. Good luck for the future. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I just want to thank Bill for his uh, loyal and, and dedication, uh, or loyal commitment and dedication to his role as, as Deputy Chair of Infrastructure Services. 
uh, between uh, 07 and uh, 2010. Um, but I just want to share with you, um, you will recall that uh, Bill, myself and uh, the Mayor of the time, Peter Chin, had a trip to Japan as the sister city uh, relationship uh, reciprocal uh, visit. And um, out of the three of us, I was the, the most poorly prepared in a musical sense. And I felt, I often feel in, inadequate um, when I'm around Bill, but I even felt even more inadequate uh, where you had Peter Chin with such a terrific voice and um, you had uh, Bill backing him, uh, him up with a, a very good voice as well, plus playing instruments at the time. But it was a fantastic trip, but it, it certainly put uh, Dunedin in great light and uh, the skills that, that Bill took and, uh, and showed to the to local people in Otaru, along with the, the former mayor, was, um, was a true delight. Awesome. Bill, I'd like to pass on my appreciation and the first thing that I'd like to um, thank you for is um, your integrity and your support because uh, when you went to Bill with a, uh, uh, with a proposal that was coming towards Council and you explained everything to him, uh, you couldn't move him from his position if he didn't agree with you. But if he was teetering and he said he would go with your direction, he never let you down, and I really appreciated that. Uh, like Dave, uh, the first time I've ever been on stage was because of your efforts, and uh, I was paired up with Peter Chin, and we had to wear these dark glasses and sing at the Regent Theatre, and I sang with gusto with Peter Chin as my partner, but my mic wasn't turned on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you all for your, uh, for your comradeship, and... Um, Appreciate working with you on council. Councillor Acton, can I invite you to speak on your own behalf? Is this like a right of reply? <laughs> Pretty much. Thank you, Worship. <clears throat> Seems odd that just about nine years ago, the first time I walked in here, and I was absolutely terrified because I knew. As per this one, things were in alphabetical order, so I was going to be the first one to be sworn in and I had no idea what that was going to entail, but I suppose the, the bigger part was I didn't really know what the, the role was going to um, entail as time progressed on. I was relatively slow to speak at the start because I wanted to try and find my feet and uh, uh, as the last uh, probably six years have gone through, it's been a huge roller coaster of a lot of goods and some not so goods. Today, though, I'd like to focus on the goods because the not so goods have been well and truly uh, covered, been covered over and over again in the Target Daily Times. <laughs> I do thank them for that. <laughs> it's a shame Chris Morris isn't here, isn't it? <laughs> so, anyway, on a more serious note, but on a positive note, in my view, uh, the role of an elected member is that we should be focused on people, not on things. Now, the well-being of the people that live in this city really should be our number one priority, especially when it then comes down to investing in assets and facilities. It's the impact on people that should be our main driver. So talking about people, um, and ironically I've just about got them in the, no, not quite the order that they spoke, but I'd like to acknowledge uh, some of the people that um, have supported me over the last nine years and I start off with councillors. Um, Councillor Collins, who incidentally has been a, a friend of mine for about 30 years, even though I don't look that old. <laughs> Neither does he for that matter. <laughs> uh, right from the start, before the, uh, the Trinium started and, and I was uh, uh, working on how to how to uh, campaign and so on. Neil helped me in, in many ways and has been an absolutely, totally committed friend and colleague in the whole time I've been on council. Uh, Neil's um, heads up right at the start as to what to expect and how to approach some situations. Uh, it's been absolutely priceless, so thank you, Neil. Is there a time limit on this? <laughs> I'd have you on to council at noon, and in my view, I would say that Andrew's probably one of the most dedicated and hard-working councillors around this table. I'm not saying others don't work hard or are dedicated, but Andrew definitely, I think, is, is right at the top. 
working as his deputy and his comm for the three year period as he uh, mentioned before was an absolute pleasure. Andrew leads by example and considers everybody's view at all times. The notes that I made about uh, Japan I'll just leave out. Yeah. Thank you Andrew. And um, Next Councillor Bazet. Uh, as I just said before it took me a while to um, pluck up the courage to speak in the early days but um, John taught me that the no-nonsense approach is actually a good way to go. His matter-of-fact way of expressing himself showed me that so long as you've got passion, you're passionate about what it is that you believe in, then you can well and truly get your point across well. Thank you, John. I now move on to Councillor Hudson. And chairing the uh, Community Development Committee has definitely been an honour and a privilege, and I thank you, Your Worship, for been given that opportunity. Um, I've always felt though that I really should have been the deputy and Paul the chair because um, Paul's experience and knowledge as a councillor and as a businessman and very much a community leader is way beyond me and will always be that way. But I very much respect you Paul and um, the way in which you respect others, your caring for others and, and how you've supported me through this last three year period. So, very, very, very much thank you. Councillor Weatherall, I would have to say, would be the best facilitator of meetings that we have. Um, his knowledge and experience and consent has uh, given him a fantastic style of chairing meetings because a lot of the time there's members of the public involved or present and they're perhaps a bit nervous and they're not quite sure how how things are supposed to, to run. Colin makes it very, very clear in a very, very friendly way. And, uh, and, I, and I think that, that helps uh, the, the way in which people are able to present. Um, and I'm also very grateful for the uh, subcommittees that Colin's chaired that I've been a part of. And uh, I've learned a lot from you, Colin, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Brown. I'll never forget the very first day that we came in here after the uh, the election in 2004, even though it took about six weeks to find out who was on. <laughs> STV was suffering from a few glitches. Um, and uh, we were through in the Civic Centre and, and the thing that Sid said to me was, uh, you have to look at yourself in this role as being a steward of the city. He said you need to uh, take the job at hand in a way and such that you're looking after the city and the people, making the quality of life better at the same time is preserving the city for the future. Um, so the, the way that you uh, uh, express yourself and the, the thoroughness of your information I think is absolutely fantastic and I've really appreciated having had the opportunity to serve with you over the last couple of years. Thank you. Now I get on to staff. How many are there, Paul? 600 and... You have a bit more. I see. It's a shame Lee's not here. He'd been on this list as well. <laughs> I'm talking positively, of course. <laughs> There's so many stuff, of course, <clears throat> but I would very, uh, just in particular, I'd like to um, acknowledge and thank uh, General Manager Tony Avery and former General Manager Graham Hall. Uh, they are people that I worked very closely with at the General Manager level, and I very much appreciate their knowledge, experience, advice, and guidance. So thank you, Tony. And just going one, one stage further, more so in the last three years, Mick Reese and his team in community development are just priceless. Their, their knowledge, their support, their dedication to their jobs is just right at the top as far as I'm concerned. Of course, we can't leave out chief executive officers. And uh, I thank you, Paul, for, for your a couple of years with the, with the council and, and uh, the, the relationship that we've built in that time. Uh, but I'll also note as well our former chief executive, Jim Harland, who um, was obviously the, the, the person in charge for the bulk of my time on council and, and uh, I uh, very much thank Jim for his knowledge, experience and guidance as well. So now I move out of the council environment just briefly and that takes me to my parents who are sitting right behind me here. Uh, Mum and Dad, they've been, like an absolute, they've been like rocks in their support for me during this time on council. They've been absolutely wonderful sounding boards. They've never judged or given their opinions for me to act on. 
They've always been genuinely interested. And I've been very, very lucky to have had their guidance. Right. Thank you very, very much. I'm nearly finished. Some of the areas of um, great interest that I've been involved in, subcommittees, working parties, which is probably where a lot of the, 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 the real on the ground work goes on, and that's um, the things that I've been involved in, being the likes of the Aquatics Working Party, which has been going for quite a long time, uh, Logan Park uh, Working Party as well, the theatres, city theatres, uh, Middle Beach, playgrounds, China's Garden, the list goes on. But that is, I think, where a lot of the real work that gets done. Uh, there's a lot of staff involvement, uh, involvement from people outside of the community, but the one that I would say would have to be the biggest challenge was John Wilson Drive. Uh, Councillor Bazette um, alluded to that just before, and uh, um, I'd like to think that it's not over. I know that there's been a lot of compromise going on, and I appreciate that, but at the moment, even though it's open from 11 till 3 Monday to Friday, I'm still getting in, a, in the neck from people that what on earth is Council doing about John Wilson Drive? But I said I was going to be positive today, and my positive comment to that is hopefully the next council will make it better. <laughs> um, I can't really finish off without making a comment about the stadium. And my comment about the stadium is the fact that it's about the future and the growth of the city. It's about the, the comfort for those who live here to be able to experience the sort of activities, events, sporting and otherwise that have always happened in the city outdoors. And there's been the feedback I've had from a lot of people over the last few years. Um, and they've also, the feedback's also come from people that have said that they were uh, very much opponents of the stadium being built, is that they're glad to have it. They think it's fantastic. And all I can say is that, not just to the future council, but to the public at large, embrace this, this absolutely wonderful facility. It is perfect for our city and for our conditions. Um, and just one little comment in relation to the council going forward, uh, which of course I won't have a say in at least for another three years, and that is uh, I think our biggest focus going forward is about growth. I know it's not easy, we've had a lot of things outside of our, con our control, um, uh, reducing opportunities and so on, but it's growth, it's industries, it's jobs, it's increasing our working population any way we can and and I would definitely encourage the next council to look at and take every possible opportunity to increase employment and the population growth to the city. And just a, a little concluding comment in relation to the value of rates because the key thing that all of us get is that in the net that rates keep going up, you know, that we're spending lots of money and they keep going up. Well, the average rating account in the city, when I say average, that's sort of in that area where there's a lot of properties in that figure, and it's about 1,800 a year, so call it 150 a month. 150 a month is a fairly modest electricity account, and probably low for a lot of people, but all you get for that 150 is electricity. When you consider a rates bill at that level, I know rating, the rate system is a very blunt instrument, so some people with higher value properties won't see it quite this way, but in the main, you'll find that for the average $150 a month rates bill, the best part of half of that is water in, water out. <coughs> as much as we consider water to be free, and sewage is just a case of pushing the button on the toilet, it's not free. It takes up about half your rates. By the time you then look at the other big costs, and that's things like the library, roading, footpaths, reserves, that sort of thing, by the time you get through those, you're down to about $10 a week that you're getting everything else for. And that everything else actually includes the stadium, the Chinese garden, uh, the list can go on, wider pool, the art gallery, the museums. So what I'm really trying to nail in here is that for $150 a month, that you would pay for electricity, and that's all you get. You get all of these other things for the same value. I think rates are very, very good value for money. In conclusion, I would like to really and sincerely thank the community for their support of me in this role, um, especially to those who have voted for me three times in a row. And maybe one day in the future, my name could appear on the ballot paper again. Thank you, Worship.
Speaker Bill. And now I'm going to put the motion of appreciation. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Now, Bill, if you'd like to come up, I've got a. Retiring councillor is Councillor Brown. And so I will move that the council record its sincere thanks to Sid Brown for the loyal and conscientious service given to the city of Dunedin as a member of the Dunedin City Council for 15 years during the period 1998 to 2013. The council extends sincere appreciation for the services rendered and every good wish for the future. And that's 15 <coughs> years is a very substantial contribution uh, and I think all I can say is that Sid will be remembered for his consistent hard work uh, as much as anything behind the scenes but there's no faulting the commitment that Councillor Brown has, uh, applied especially on financial issues and as a strong advocate for Mosgiel. So I thank you for that Sid and I open it up to Councillor Councillor Weatherall. Your Worship, uh, I need a second. Oh, sorry, second. I'll second as well. Right. Thank you, sir. The, um, 15 years ago, I guess, that uh, a number of us came to council, and Sid was one of the group that I was uh, privileged to be with. Very quickly into that process, Sid was the chair of uh, PE, and one of the things that we were assigned to do was to wash up the district plan. And I think I recall, who cares the number, but it was 254 appeals. <laughs> So Sid and I decided that uh, we were assigned those together. The best thing to do was to split them in half so we trusted each other. And that's the word I use, sir. We trusted each other. Thank you, Sid. Councillor Collins. Uh, I've known this man over here for quite a long time. Also, in fact, I knew him when he was Sydney, a little boy at school almost out there in uh, Mosgill. He comes from good Mosgill stock. Uh, the Brown family are, are pretty well household names uh, on the Tyree Plain, and so they should be too. And uh, I know his mum and dad, great people, great people. And uh, Sid, for those that haven't known him too long, he ran a pretty good uh, furniture shop along Gordon Road in Mosgill. And uh, I think I may have purchased the odd thing there and hit him up for a discount. He wasn't too hard to get one out of either, he was pretty good. Um, I, I like and, and also he's a great rugby player, in fact when the boys and I would go to uh, Carisbrook and sit in the stand, quite often Shona and uh, Sid would arrive into more plush seats than we had but that was, uh, he was always there supporting Otago, he's coached a few teams in his time as well, there's a whole lot of uh, else about him and other attributes. As uh, a city councillor I, I pretty well you could almost name him a, a wise old owl because he does have, uh, when he speaks, I listen, and I know we all do, and he's, um, his counsel on things has been quite superb over the years, and, and I've been very, very impressed with the way he has dealt with his role as an elected representative, the way he's put his uh, concise views to us all, and he's very fair-minded and very, very thorough in what he says and what he does. And finally, um, I would like just on a personal note to thank Sid for uh, the times when you'd have briefings, Mayor Cull, uh, at lunchtime and I'd have to scoot up here rather quickly from radio, uh, arriving probably the last or the second last of the table, and Sid would kindly leave some scraps and a few sandwiches, <laughs> cupcake or two, so that I didn't miss out. And that's pretty nice thinking back that a, that a dear old pensioner plate was always just on one side of, of the table down there in the Edinburgh room. So thank you and good luck for the future. The, the squire nowadays of Mosgill. Councillor Wilson. Uh, democracy is a wonderful thing and um, for the last six years Priscilla and I have both um, represented Mosgill Tari and often um, locked, here, the lo lo um, locked out our, um, in debate and taken different sides. But um, during that time, I have to say that um, I've really appreciated Sid's complete and utter respectful
why he's dealt with um, issues, his true professionalism, his commitment to the city and to Mos Giltari, and um, his discreetness. And um, I'd just like to note that uh, I understand he's already been asked for requests for um, ongoing work, and I appreciate that the work that he is already committed to in the future um, for the city, and I'd just like to acknowledge that and thank him very, very much. Thank you, Worship. Um, as a former uh, P&E Chair, um, current Finance and Strategy Chair and Deputy Mayor, you've, you've said you've played uh, some pretty important roles for the city and uh, I certainly appreciate all that you've done. Um, you bring the, the business now to the table, uh, which is appreciated, and also you've always had sound, considered advice, in my view. Um, I just want to touch on a couple of other things. City consultants, the divestment uh, that occurred probably about 04, I think, or there or thereabouts. Uh, Sid, and myself, and Leah McBay were, uh, were tasked with um, working through submissions about the divestment of uh, city consultants. Um, and at that time, um, I'm not sure of the staff numbers, but it created a considerable amount of um, concern from staff. And we sat as a hearings panel to listen uh, from staff uh, their, their view of um, potentially losing losing their uh, their source of employment. And that was a, a pretty uh, testing time for those staff members, but I just reflect on, on Sid's guidance and, uh, you know, once again, the uh, sort of the sound advice uh, that he brought to the table. The last point I wanted to make was the um, the stadium development, and I'm not sure whether the appropriate word is that that Sid carried a considerable burden um, as the as the stadium was developed. But I know for a fact that um, as the the rep on the uh, stakeholders group, I think it was called, um, there was a lot that was going on uh, that involved. Um, discussions at all at all sorts of levels, whether it was trying to secure additional funding, or whether it was trying to sort out whether the the, the sound system plans were were as uh, as good as they should be, and that sort of thing. But I know for a fact that it um, it tied um, Councillor Brown up for for many many years, and a lot of that went under the radar. So thank you very much, Councillor Bazir. Thank you. Um, I think if you were to um, try to sum up, Sid, in a couple of words, two that I've used would be absolute integrity. And, um, and he's shown that in, in all the years that I've known him, and I like um, Councillor Collins, and I endorse the words that the other two speakers have, have said, like Councillor Collins, I've known Sid for a very long time, um, played rugby against them. Uh, they, the days when Green Island used to be tired whenever we wanted to. <laughs> And, and uh, that goes back a few years, um, but uh, I think to some degree I had uh, I could be held responsible for Sid being here because I can recall him phoning me one day and asking, and telling me that he was uh, interested in standing for council, and uh, I gave him a very colourful uh, um, background on uh, on what council was all about, and then uh, lo and behold, he put his name forward and he was elected, and of course he's been a wonderful servant for the city um, ever since. I think um, certainly some of the others have touched on a few of the championships that he's had, but I think Sid's uh, greatest contribution, and I believe that uh, I'd get the support of Peter Chin if he was here today, uh, was when he was deputy to Peter, because that was quite a, <coughs> a difficult time, and certainly I know Peter appreciated the, uh, the steady hand that, um, that Sid had uh, on the city's, um, not only their finance, but he was deputy mayor at the time, and just how the, the city was being managed through a very difficult uh, period. And I think that uh, speaks volumes for the man because um, he was under pressure, like uh, a lot of councillors were at that time, and he uh, just uh, soldiered on through. So he, he, I think he's been a wonderful servant for the city. I'll take this opportunity um, just to also briefly apologise to the Browns for the comment I made about the uh, Scottish names out in Tyree. I know that's shown it here today. I'm sorry. Uh, it came out not as well as I thought it would. <laughs> uh, um, and just on that light note, we have had a few laughs over, over the years. I mean, there's a, a lot of funny moments as well. But um, Sid, uh, you've, done, you've done yourself very proud. So uh, congratulations and all the best for the future. Councillor Butcher. Hi, right, um, so I'd like to thank you for your um, your treatment of me over the last nine years. You've always been fair to me, 
and um, have treated me like a team member and a colleague, and I've really appreciated that. And one of the things that I've, I've often sat in meetings and I thought, oh, I just thought, maybe I can just say something, oh, and I won't say that, it will just be seem stupid. Hi, oh, two seconds later, Sid's got his hand up and is saying all this stuff, and I'm thinking, damn, it's so good that somebody around here is confident enough to be able to say what they feel without thinking, oh, God, I'm going to be seen to be a stupid person. So thank you for that. You've been a, a quite a good uh, role model as far as politicians are concerned. Yes, yeah, Sid, I won't add much, but what I would like to thank you for over the last three years, I think I've really benefited from seeing the calm, measured and collected way that you contribute to dialogue around this table. Um, you never do so with a hot head and you never do so in a way that isn't considered. And I think um, newcomers to the table like myself um, have, have benefited from that and I certainly think that I can learn more in that regard. Thank you. Um, Bill, you just made me aware of standing orders. I've looked up. I've got plenty of time. There's no time restrictions. So <laughs> <laughs> if you like to all make yourself comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, I, I'll be pretty brief because I, I don't want to go over uh, issues of council. But I think. Um, some of the kind words that have been spoken around uh, helped me at the start of council because um, I was privileged to have Elizabeth Hannum take me under her wing uh, at the first part of council. And she was a very wise council. And um, she always said to me, you'll never be successful around this table unless you get seven other people to agree to your position. And so therefore you can't achieve anything on your own. You need to actually take your colleagues with you and I thought that was very wise counsel. Um, she went a wee bit further later that I had to remind her that I am my own person. Those <laughs> 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 who know how strong-willed she was. <laughs> um, but um, uh, first of all, I'd really like to start with the Mosgiel community because I need to thank the Mosgiel community. They chose me to represent them. Um, as their number one choice for five years and or five terms and admittedly three of those I was the only candidate so. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, it, it is a privilege to represent your community um, also at this stage I'd like to include family because um, I'd like to thank publicly Shona and the children because public life does give an intrusion into your family life and um, I can give two really good instances of both sides of the spectrum. About uh, probably six, seven years ago, 6.30 in the morning, I got a phone call from this irate person. Uh, we'd had a flood and there was sewage flowing down his road. And he rang and said, what are you going to do about it? If you don't get on here very shortly, I'll put it on the trailer and dump it on your front lawn. And that's the, and he was quite all right, and, and, and it was if it was my problem, you know, it, it was an issue of, of a flood. But the other good side of it was that uh, one particular um, day I got rung up by this 95 year old lady pensioner living on her own in Mosgill, and she tried two or three times to get council to fix a pothole in the footpath outside her house. And um, so I went around to see her. And, and it wasn't until actually meeting her that you understood what a pothole in a footpath meant to someone 95 years of age that couldn't drive because she had to negotiate this footpath that was uneven and had a pothole in it. So I managed to um, convince council to make it a priority and it was fixed within a couple of weeks. Well, I got a beautiful card from her thanking me for uh, acting on her behalf. So it's both sides of the spectrum have come through. Um, I won't go into council um, councillors that I've served with, uh, uh, and other than to say I have <coughs> struck in my time around the co ta uh, council table a councillor that I couldn't get on with. There were some difficult councillors, but behind the scenes they were good people, and so therefore they have an opinion, and you have to respect that. So uh, I thank all my council colleagues for their comradeship and their support. Um, 
and also need to actually turn to staff because if you're going to go on a journey through political life, you can't do it on your own. And when you are actually have the privilege of chairing committees, you actually rely very heavily on staff and you rely on trust and you rely on that professional expertise that's brought forward. And I can honestly say that the calibre of staff that I've worked with and the Dunedin City Council is of the highest calibre. Um, turning to chief executives, so I've been uh, three chief executives a very short time with Murray Douglas uh, and then uh, with Jim Harlan and now with uh, Paul Orders. And, uh, and even in the interim periods when we had people that were standing in, the chief executives that I've worked with, uh, I can only talk positively of. But I have to make special mention of Paul Orders. I think uh, Paul is one of the uh, best uh, examples of a change manager that you'll come across. He'd done a, uh, implemented change within this organisation with dignity and has got tremendous results. And thank you, Paul. Um, The last thing I really want to talk about is, um, from a council perspective, uh, 14 years, I've been on council for 15 years, and 14 years I've been a chairperson. And I thank my, the Mayor of the Times and my colleagues for electing me to that position. It is a privilege <coughs> to serve your community. And just ending, I'll end with a quote, because I think it's a simple way. And it's a quote saying how simple it is to be a politician. And it is a politician needs the ability to foretell what is going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month and next year. And to have the ability afterwards to explain why it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for the opportunity to serve the city. I've appreciated it and I'll never forget it. Thank you. Motion of appreciation. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Carried.